Doctor Who, The Invasion, Episode 1, TARDIS. The TARDIS has reassembled itself and everyone is on board. Jamie, hey, Doctor. Is it all, all right? It worked. It's all right. It worked. Doctor Jamie, you're right. We'd better just check, though. Zoe, are we actually on our way, our way Doctor? Are we st- stuck somewhere? Doctor, well, let's see, shall we? Doctor switches on the scanner to show a cratered body in the foreground and a blue and white planet further away. Jamie, where are we? What's that? Zoe, it's the moon, isn't it, Doctor? Doctor, yes, yes, that's the dark side of the moon. We seem to have stopped in space. Zoe, you remember seeing this before? Doctor, shh, Zoe, the light on the moon surface, the light on the moon surface. Do you see it? Zoe, Doctor, it's getting bigger. It's coming towards us. Doctor, Zoe, that's a missile. Jamie, a what? Zoe, it's a missile. Somebody's fired a missile at us. Jamie, oh, Doctor, come on. Let's get out of here. Doctor, don't, now don't fuss me, Zoe. Zoe, well, what's happened? Doctor, well, it's a landing circuit. It seems to have jammed. That's why we're stuck in space. Ah, the Doctor pulls the lever, lever off and thumps the console with it. Zoe, we'll never make it. Oh, we're, oh, we're too late. Dada, oh, that stupid thing. Oh, kaboom. Tardis has vanished and something else flies away from where it was. It's a peaceful pasture. A peaceful pasture cow looks up as a distant body blue flashing light appears above the ground, followed by a police box. In the Tardis, everyone gets up from the bot floor. Jamie, I think we've landed. Doctor, yes, I'm sorry about that. Jamie, Jamie, are you right, Zoe? Zoe, yes, I think so. Jamie, anyway, we weren't blown to pieces by the that missile thing. Zoe, why would anyone want to fire a missile at us? Surely they'll find out who we are, who we are, who we are first. Doctor, yes, unless they already knew, knew already. Zoe, that the question is, was the object we saw on the other side of the moon in this time zone or not? Jamie, you mean it could still be out there? Doctor, yes, let's have a look. The scanner shows a curious cow. They all laugh. Doctor, we're certainly not on the moon surface, are we? Jamie, what's the matter with the TARDIS, Doctor? It keeps going wrong all the time. Doctor, many needs an overhaul, Jamie. Just like any piece of motor machinery. Zoe, well, haven't you got any spares, Doctor? No, no. Shall have to see if we can get some made. Let's have a f- further look, shall we? Electrical, electricity pylon. Doctor, oh yes, it could be 20th century. England in summertime, I, sh- I should say. See the rain clouds? You must try and look up our old f- friend, Professor Travis of London. He might be able to help us. Jimmy, I. Doctor, yes, always supporting Supposing he's not a baby or a schooled boy. Now come along, let's get just collect this circuit. I think I'd better see this one. Let's just let's just get collect this circuit. I think I I better see this one. There, it's all right. Just a fault in the visual stabilizer circuit. We better take that too. The title just vanishes. Jamie? Doctor, doctor, where are you? Doctor, come along, take my hand. Road, the doctor, Jamie and Zoe come out of the, the visible TARDIS and walk across the field to the road. Hope every moment remembers where they part. A military style lorry comes along and the doctor waves it down. Doctor, I wonder if you could help us. Man, what are you trying to get out? Doctor, we're trying to get to London. The man, get in. Doctor, oh, that's very civil of you. Man, well, shut up, will you? Get in, the doctor, Zoe and Zoe. Jamie, climbing to the back of the lorry, drives off and two motorcycles follow. The driver sees him and then after a short while has to pull over. He opens the tailgate. Doctor, is there something wrong? Man, look, we better clear, get clear of the lorry. Come on. Roadside. They hide in a small wood by the tr- road. Jamie, what's happening? Why are you we hiding? Man, secu- company security. Where my tail? Sorry, which company? Man, come here, come on, there's only one company. Dada, well, you see, we're strangers around here. Man, strangers? Then you're not from the community then? 
Doctor, no. Man, then how did you get inside the compound? That a well, that's a rather a long story, you see. So he came in the community you told, talked about. Are they prisoners here then? Man, there isn't. Those who haven't gone over to the company, yes. Not that they say you can't, you can't get out. They just make it pretty impossible without passes. Do you mean you can, you can move in and out? Man, I got all, I got to get in all right. But getting out might be just a bit more, a little bit more difficult. Doctor, this company, what do they do? Man, international electromatics. Not, but now surely you've heard of them. Doctor, well, no. We've been a little out of touch. Man, you must have been. They're, they're the world's biggest electronics manufacturers. You buy, hardly buy a piece of equipment that isn't theirs. Quick, get down. Two motorcycles walk past. Sorry, well, what is this place, this compound? Man, they set up a whole community that own factories, houses, a vast network of international industrial complexes. All the local people have been bought out. Most of them join the company. The others, man, what happened to them? Man, my people haven't been able to trace them. My, my doctor, your people? Man, should be should be safe now. We're not far from the guard post. You three had better stay out of sight in the lorry. I'll try and bluff our way out. Come on, lorry, they Come up to a gate in high chink, chain link fence, toppled with barbed wire, manned by un- uniformed armed guards. Jamie is slowing down, must be the guard post now. So, yes, but why are we hiding like this? We've done nothing wrong. Well, oh, Doctor, we'll find out later. Keep down. And I'm glad to check some ad bars. We have a waltz for him, a lorry. <coughs> the man is allowed to drive on. Shortly afterwards, the motorcycles arrive. Riders arrive. Road, the lorry stops and the man opens it, the tailgate. Man, they, they're right behind us, Doctor. Oh, well, thank you very much, Doctor. They're there, they're there, they're there, they're there in the distance. Now come on, get lost. The Doctor and Zoe and Jamie go behind the hedge and leave. Motorcycles pull up, the riders are wearing the same uniform, the guards at the gate. Biker, hey you, I want to see your pass. You, will you come back with us for questioning? Man, oh, come off it. A pass. That pass is in order, isn't it? Biker, don't argue. Follow us. Man, oh, no. I'm not going back inside the com- that compound. There's nothing you can do to make me. D- Biker, you will come back with me, us. Man, look. We're not in the AE property rail now. You have no authority. The bikers aim their pistols at him. Man, sorry, you want, you want to hold me. Get... Get it onto the police, see ya. The bikers shoot the man a little way away. The doctor flags in a car. Doctor, can you support, give us a lift to London? Canfield. Yes, I suppose so. This is the director, Douglas Canfield. Doctor, are you in, in you get Canfield, alright. Zoe and Jamie get to the bank, in the back, and the doctor takes a passion to seat. Jamie, thank you. Thank you very much. Outside Traveller's Traveller's house. A doctor goes up the steps in the front door of number 18, James Gardens. Doctor, here we are, right. That's odd. It says Wake Watkins. Home. Jamie, you must have the wrong house. Doctor, well, the telephone directory definitely said number 18. We'll ask. Doctor rings a bell, labelled Watkins several times to the occupant. A young lady gets fed up and answers Isabel. If you don't mind, I'm trying to work. Lounge doctor. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. But we wonder whether you can help us. We wonder if Isabel takes a camera off its tri- tripod. Isabel, oh, look. The stupid thing's gone and jammed. Doctor, oh, perhaps I could help you. Isabel, well, you know... Well, do you know anything about cameras? Doctor, yes, a little, I see. Isabel, now I had it on an automatic shutter. Doctor, you're taking photos of yourself? Is well, yes, and then you, you interrupted me, and that stupid thing jammed. How have you come, hey, have you come to see my uncle? You're not here, but who are you? Friends of his? Fellow nuts? Doctor, please let me answer one question at a time. Is well, hey, you be careful with that thing. Cost me a fortune, Doctor. It's all right. It's a very simple mechanism. Mechanism. Who's your uncle? Isabel, Professor Watkins. 
Doctor, oh, then Professor Travis doesn't live here. Isabel, well, he did. He left about, about a month ago, gone to America for a year with his daughter. Is Jimmy, oh, that's just great. Isabel, but my, my uncle worked at Cotefish Labs. He wanted to do some work. So Professor Travis said he could use his daughter's lab here. I moved in because I got kicked out of my studio last week. Doctor, what field of science is your uncle in? Isabel, I don't know. He's applied physics or something. Oh, he's meeting around, messing around with computers and things. Complete nuts. Doctor, well, what is it? Well, that is fortunate. Perhaps he might be able to help us. Is he at home? Isabel, no. Doctor, well, where, where is he? Isabel, well, how do I know? I'm not his keeper. Hey, have you fixed it? Doctor, yeah, yes, that's right. That's all right. Isabel, that's really great. Thanks, Doctor Miss. Isabel to Zoe. Hey, that's a jolly outfit, the glitter suit. Would you mind posing for me? Isabel, what? Zoe, what? Isabel, just stand up there. Doctor Miss. Isabel, yeah. Now just stand there. Here. Head over the shoulder. Doctor, have you any idea when your uncle's going to be back? Isabel, no. He left about a week ago. I haven't seen him since. Jimmy, a week? Isabel, yeah. He's prattling on about some new invention or something or the other and having a chance to develop it. Now, not you. Jimmy, oh. Isabel, okay. Now just. Tell her, can't you just get in touch with him? Isabel, no, I tried. I wanted to borrow a couple of quid of him in a hurry. Oh, well, they said he wasn't available for phone calls. Doctor, they? Now, who is this they? It's Isabel. Now get, now get that, will you? I don't know, International Electric something or other. Zoe, International Electromatics? Isabel, yes, probably. Doctor, you mean your uncle's gone to work for these people? We surely, surely get in touch with him. We, we surely we can get in touch with him. Isabel, well, you can try f- for telephone, but I doubt if you get any joy. Phones in the hall, numbers subscribed on the wall. Doctor, thank you. And Doctor and Amy leave. Isabel, oh, hey, don't go. Don't often get the chance to photo- of photographing a real model. Say, so, oh, all right. Isabel, come on, let's get, let's get you fixed up with some gear. Hallway. Jamie reads the number of the walls. Doctor uh, Dolls. Jamie three. Doctor three. Jamie four. Doctor four. Jamie two. Doctor two. Jamie. Doctor. Jamie. Doctor. Do you suppose this firm sh- could be the one that the driver's talking about? Doctor. Oh, I'm sure of it. Jamie. In that case, Watkins could have been kidnapped. Jamie. Doctor. Oh, Jamie. You haven't. Lit- you mustn't let your imagination run away with you. I must admit, it's a bit strange, woman. International Electromatics Company, take your business. Doctor, I'd like to speak to, with Professor Watkins. Well, in one moment, long pause. Party not available. Doctor, oh yes, you see. But this is very important. Doctor, woman, party not available. Doctor, yes, but I must speak with him. Woman, party not available. Party not available. Doctor, but this is... But, Doctor, but this is an automatic answering device. I'll show it you, the machine. Doctor puts the phone down. Doctor, now what? Do- Jamie, now what? Doctor, there's one, only one thing for it. We have to go there ourselves. Lounge. Zoe's wearing a feather boa and a neck, a mini pinafore dress. Now, Isabel is photographing her from below. Isabel, okay, it's fabulous. Just keep it like that. Great. A doctor and Jamie enter. Isabel, any luck? Doctor, no. It was st- it was a stupid-minded computer answering the service. S- Isabel, well, what do we do now? Doctor, Jamie and I are going to this place. Come on, Zoe. Zoe, no thanks. I think I'll stay here. It's great fun. Jamie, you look like a chicken with all those feathers on. Doctor, well, well, come on, Jamie. Oh, the address, Isabel. Oh, that's quite the wall too. Doctor, oh, thank you. Jimmy, do you not write anything down on paper at all? Do, Isabel, no, I only lose it if I did. Writing on a paper wall is much safer. You can't lose a wall, can you? Do you know? Isabel, now listen. Just put your bow, your bow around your head. Okay, now bring your eyes just on, on into me. Okay, i.e. your reception. 
Dr. Jamie arrived at a large skyscraper, Mill Bank Tower, actually, and, and entered a deserted reception area. This is one door labelled, there is one door labelled IE, no authorised entry. So the doctor goes through, outside two men in a car watch him, them. The doctor goes, comes face to face with a computer bank, complete with magnetic tape and flashing lights. Doctor, I thought so. Jamie, what? Doctor, more stupid computers, automatic, automatic receptionist, right? Woman, international autonomic, electromatic company, state your business. Doctor, I would like, please, to speak with Professor Watkins. Doctor, woman, one moment, party not available. Doctor, then I would like to speak with someone in authority. Woman, that your request will be considered and your appointment arranged. Please state your name and address. Doctor, that's no good. I wish to speak with someone now. Somebody now. Woman, I'm oh, sorry, all personal is engaged. Doctor, by sis, this is an emergency. Woman, state the nature of the private emergency. Doctor, it's a private matter. Woman, private matters are not of no emergency status. Doctor, I will shut you, stupid machine. Dialogical inventions. Jamie, what's now? Doctor, come on. Jamie, where are we going? Doctor, well, there must be something else in the building. Except for these stupid machines. Come on, the doctor, turn to Jamie. Go out and down back about the gully. Watched by security cameras. Outside AE, the car, Brenton. HQ, are you checking now? Where are they? Tracy, good, good, go round the back. Down the outside side of the Brenton. That's a dead end, isn't it? So they not got to come out this way. Tracy, if they come out. Vaughan's office. A silver-haired man, Vaughan, is watching the doctor and Jamie on a monitor. Parker, well? Vaughan, the same two? Parker, yeah. Vaughan, deal with them. Parker leads Vaughan. Presses a button. A Jamie and the doctor step out to the lift. The gas pulls out the nozzle. Fills in the cor- corridor. They collapse. Outside AE. In the car, Brenton. Okay, let's move. Tracy HQ, Brenton. Yes, they, they, they run a tra- they have run a track. They want those two priority. Tracy, right, let's get them. Corridor, Park and the guards come out to li- lift and take hold of the doctor. Doctor, wait. Park up with raising his fist. Yes, this will be my pleasure. Vaughan and Munter, Parker, bring them to my office. Parker, but Mr. Vaughan, I haven't interrogated him yet. Vaughan and Monitor, Parker, please do as I say. Parker, Pecker. Do that bit again. Corridor. Packer and the guards come out of the lift and take hold of the doctor. Doctor, wait. Packer. Raising his fists. There must be my, this will be my pleasure. Vaughan and Monitor, Packer. Bring him to my office, Packer. But Mr. Vaughan, I haven't interrogated him yet. Vaughan, I'll monitor. Packer. Please do as I say, Packer. Yes, sir. Come on, this way. Vaughan's office. Sunlight streams for the vertical blinds. Vaughan, come on and sit down, gentlemen. Doctor, thank you. Vaughan, you can go, Parker. Parker, but Mr. Vaughan, I... Vaughan, thank you, Packer. Thank you, Packer. Yes, sir. Packer leaves. Vaughan, I must apologize for Packer's crude devotion to duty, but your method of entry into my building was rather unconventional, wasn't it? Jamie, ah, oh, well, there was no need to think. There was no need for all that gas and stuff. Dolly Jamie, I think perhaps it is we who should be apologizing to you, Mr. Vaughan. Vaughan? Tobias Vaughan, a managing director of the International Electromatics. Your business must be very pressing to force you to such extremes. Doctor, yes, it is. Vaughan, concerning Professor Watkins. Jay, how did you know? Vaughan, my computer, it ported directly to me. Doctor, oh, I see. Vaughan, you've gone to a lot of trouble for nothing, you know. The professor's working on an experiment, refuses to see anyone. Jamie, oh, well, we can only... We only want to talk to him, you see. Vaughan, perhaps I can help, Doctor. Oh, no, I don't think so. Thank you very much.
Jamie, oh, come on, Doctor. It's only a couple of electronic circuits. Doctor kicks Jamie in on the ankle. Well, circuits, electronic circuits. My technicians are the best in the world, I'm sure. Be able to assist you. Show me the circuits. Doctor, well, I... Vaughn, please, I'd like to help. The Doctor hands Vaughn the TARDIS circuits. Vaughn, as you say, rather complex. However, I'm sure I'll be able to help you. Doctor, yes, I... Vaughn, I... I'll have them sent to my workhouse shops immediately. Dad, oh, how very kind. Vaughn, not all, Professor, what, not at all. Professor Watkins is a valued colleague. Anything of his is, Vaughn puts the circuits in the drawer next to a pistol. Vaughn, oh, have you got one of these, young man? Jimmy, no, what's that, what is that? Vaughn, well, surely you've been told about seen them about. They're disposable transistor radios, one of our latest products. Most popular we've sold ten million in this country alone. Here, compressed com- compensate station for the treatment you received, the worthy uh, that w- worthy backer. Jimmy, thank you. How does it work? Jimmy presses the but- only button and allow music plays. Doctor switches off again. Doctor, yeah, yes, let's see let's how you turn it off, Jamie? Vaughn, now, if you excuse me, I'm afraid I have an urgent appointment. Dada, yes, of course. Well, come along, Jamie. Vaughn Packer will meet you and show you the, the way out, Mr. Doctor. Doctor, goodbye. Vaughn, goodbye, Doctor. Jamie, goodbye, Mr. Vaughn. Thank you for the radio. Oh, not at all. A doctor and Jamie Lee. Vaughn looks closely at one of the circuits. Evacuates into the com. Vaughn, Parker, Parker, Packer, Packer on um, monitor. Yes, Mr. Vaughn. Vaughn, show our visitors off the premises, will you? Packer, on the monitor. You're very good, sir. Outside, A, A, E, Packer. Next time you read, read a notice on the door. Do you, oh, don't tell me you can read as well. What else can you do? Dr. Jamie, Packer. Goes back inside. Jamie, friendly sort of chap. Dada, hmm. Jamie, is something wrong? Dada, yes. The fellow's not what he seems. Jamie, that big idiot? Oh, don't worry about it. I'll soon sort. Dada, no, no, I mean Vaughn. A normal range of human blinking is about one every ten or fifteen seconds. Vaughn was blinking far less frequently than that. Jamie, oh, he's got a full tail and wee horns. Doctor, no, I'm not joking, Jamie. I knew for all the charm there was nothing, something odd, sinister, almost inhuman. Vaughan's office. Vaughan puts the circuit back in the drawer and flicks the switch. Part of the back wall of the office opens and reveals a very alien computer, a centre of which is an oval cybernetic head.